Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm moving my camera a little bit here. There we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Another glorious and beautiful morning to know the goodness of our living Savior. Oh, glory to God. It's so good to know him. It is good to know the God who was from the beginning and is for eternity. The true God. To know the truth. What we want is the truth. I saw something yesterday where someone was recounting sort of an, an argument, I guess, about some matters that we would call political now. But really, uh, politics is has become sort of a term to try and cover over discussion of the truth, right? So this matter in particular, I'm not even going to go into it, but somebody got mad because they used the term truth. And they were like, you have your truth and we have our truth. And I don't know where that weird idea came from, but truth is truth. You can have your facts, you can have your opinions, you can have how the truth has applied to you, but the truth is the truth, you know. In fact, you can even have your interpretation of the truth. That is perfectly uh, viable to understand that some people see a truth and say, well, that's what it looks like. And another person says, no, 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 I see something different. Well, the truth is what it is, not what we think about it. It is good to know that there is the truth, the living God. He said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. Amen? Well, sort of my subject this morning, thinking on this, this uh, passages and, and what they mean to us. I'm going to start, though, with Exodus 32, verse 9, which says, The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and certainly it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, so that my wrath may burn against them, and that I may destroy them, and that I may make of you a great nation. Now, if we continue to read that, you know, Moses interceded. He was like Jesus. He interceded for the people. They were stiff-necked. This was the Jews in the wilderness after they were delivered from Egypt. They were just difficult. I'll just say that. Just difficult. And then over in Deuteronomy 31, 27, Moses learned from Yahweh, from the Lord. He said, for I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. Even now, while I'm yet alive with you today, you have been rebellious against the Lord. How much more after my death? Moses knew. And then Stephen in Acts chapter 7, verse 51 said, you stiff necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so you do. Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? <sighs> Boy, howdy. What a what a, a fact, you know. I'm not going to say that's a truth, but what a fact throughout history. Not just the Old Testament, the New too. Which of the people God has sent did the religious or the heathen or whomever, did people who resist God not persecute? They have even killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, of whom you have now become the betrayers and murderers. So he was talking about being stiff-necked. Stiff-necked is a bad thing. Now, when they talk about being stiff-necked, I think about uh, an agrarian society, you know, where you had cattle and you grew crops and stuff like that. And if you had an ox and you're trying to lead this ox to go plow the field, you know, and you got to pull a corner and come back and plow the other way, right? Well, if you had a stiff-necked ox, you know, he's like, I want to do what I want to do. You're going to have a hard time steering that thing. He's like, mm, mm. he won't go where you want him to go, right? He's, he's stiff-necked. He's choosing. He's got something in his mind. He's got something in his desire. And he wants to follow that desire, whether you want him to or not, or whether the one who is his master, his Lord, wants him to go that way or not. And the Lord, when you're plowing an ox, you're not moving that thing, you know. And our Lord, when he's, for lack of a different term, plowing or plowing using you, when he's leading you, he's not grabbing your neck and going, and just twisting you aside saying, you got to go this way. There are a few, I'll say, blessed occasions where he is very firm with us, intervenes. Thank you, Lord, for intervening if I have been a fool. 
But for the most part, the Lord is leading us with the reins. You know, the rain, like a rein on a horse. You just, if it's a very well-trained horse, just a little tiny adjustment, a little tug, a little the feeling of the rein on it will tell it which way to go. It will guide it in the right direction, right? And I was thinking about this, uh, it's sort of a joke now, but as you get older, how how people will say, when I was a kid, you know, I could fall out of a tree 20 feet, bounce off the ground twice, then I get up and I run home and I'm fine. You know, I sleep like a baby. And now that I'm adult, you know, I sleep on the wrong pillow once and my neck is stiff for two days. And then I'm looking at things, you know, like this, <laughs> like a robot kind of. Well, I'm not taking that that testimony because I'm not going to let my words make me a stiff neck person or make me a, a physically decrepit person. I'm going to use my words for my good. I'm still strong. I'm still healthy. I'm still flexible and I recover quickly. But the point of that is, is when they're young, they're quick to, uh, they're, they're easily flexible. I'll say that. Their neck is flexible. And as you get older, it seems like your neck becomes less flexible. People become, become more set in their ways. They learn things and they say, well, this is the way and this is the only way I'm going to walk in. This is my interpretation of the truth that I have seen and I refuse to change. But let's not be that way. Let's not be stiff-necked. Surely we grab hold of the truth and we do not turn from what the Lord has revealed to us. But when the gentle nudge of the Holy Spirit guides us in a better direction, when he shows us something new, when he sends someone, a prophet, so to speak, or a minister, or someone with something a little different, don't be quick to say, no, 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 no. It can't be from God because it's not the way I've learned it. Or it can't be from God because it's not the way that my teachers learned it. And I know Somebody was an error in the past on this, and I know that this must be an error now. And go like this, stiffen up our necks and go, no, 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 no. Nope, my way is the best way, and that's the way it is. No, no, no. If you listen to the VeggieTales song, it says God's way is the best way. That's not a scripture. But the VeggieTales song is not a scripture. But that is the truth. God's way is the best way, and that's the way it is. So let us have flexible necks that listen. Listen to the Lord always ready, always eager to turn, to go wherever, just eager to learn more about our living God, more about the truth that he is. Amen. Be blessed.